Once upon a time, in a far away kingdom, a king and queen had a beautiful baby girl, and her name was Princess Aurora. The kingdom rejoiced and celebrated the birth of their new princess, and a grand christening was held to honour the baby. Many came from all around, including magical fairies. However, one fairy did not receive an invitation. The evil Calabar, and she was furious. She placed an evil curse on the princess. On her 16th birthday, she would prick her finger on the spindle and would die. But then, the lilac fairy blessed the baby with her gift. The princess will not die when she pricks her finger, but will fall into an enchanted sleep for a hundred years and can only be awoken by true love's first kiss. Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Catherine with a K and this is my living room. I thought it'd be nice to have a change of scenery. You know, somewhat, somewhat different. Anyway, before we start, I want to take this opportunity just to apologise for being a little bit late with this video. Um, unfortunately, the last two weeks, um, work and illnesses kind of got on top of me and it created quite a lot of anxiety for me. So I had to... I had to get over that before I could even think about making a video. So I'm, I'm sure you'll all understand that I must put my health first. Anyway, on with the video. When we hear the name or the music from The Sleeping Beauty, I'm sure many of you, like me, always think back to the Walt Disney classic back in 1959. I mean, it was part of it was part of our childhoods. I grew up with it. It was one of my top favourite Disney films of all time. But did you know that the music was actually composed by Tchaikovsky 69 years late earlier? On the 15th of January 1890, Tchaikovsky along with ballet master and composer Marius Petipara used an old fairy tale and created the Sleeping Beauty at the Malinsky Theatre, St. Petersburg in Russia and this became one of the most famous ballets of all time. This ballet has been performed by many companies throughout the years all around the world. It's this ballet that holds a very, very special place in the heart of the Royal Opera House and the Royal Ballet Company. During the Second World War, the Royal Opera House was closed to the theatre, but it had been opened as a dance hall for the troops who were on leave during the war. The war ended in 1945 and in 1946 it had reopened as a opera house once more and the Royal Ballet Company, then known as the Sam the Wells Company, chose the Sleeping Beauty to perform as its debut to celebrate the end of the war and choosing the Royal Opera House as its permanent home. Then Princess Aurora was played by Dame Margot Fontaine and her prince by Robert Helpman. Fast forward to now and this production of The Sleeping Beauty shown by the Royal Opera House's series From Our House to Your House. Our Prince and Princess are played by Japanese dancer Fumi Kaniko and the Italian dancer Federico Bonelli alongside Kirsten Mitnelli as the evil fairy. It was such a treat to watch Fumi and Frederico dance together. You can tell that they have such a good chemistry on stage that they trust each other to do some of these most acrobatic moves. And you can tell by the facial expressions and the way they move the bodies that they are emotionally in tune with each other. You can tell that they are a prince and princess who just have, fallen, have met and fallen in love. It was such a joy to watch and sometimes I even got quite emotional when I was seeing it because they really do take you into that world and it really does 
make you feel and, and I've said this before about Bella you don't need words to express emotions and feelings just just moving your body and using your eyes and your face can just tell you so much one of my most favourite scenes in this ballet is called the Rose Adage and Aurora or Fumi is dancing with these four suitors and they hand her a rose and she has to pirouette and hold the rose in this incredible position for at least two seconds and then she gets handed another rose and has to do it again and she has to do that four times in a row her balance is incredible but for any ballerina you must have excellent balance but she just makes it look so effortless and, and I'm sometimes taken, taken back by the, I mean, how can, how does she do this? But then, that's why they need so many years of training to be able to get up to that standard. Another example of this during the same dance, she's in the attitude position, which if you don't know what that is, it's where you stand on two legs, one leg, and then you have the second leg curled around the back of you. And she holds hands with these prints and then she has to let go, balance on point and lift her arms up in fifth position, which is which is like this. And again she has to hold that for about two or three seconds and then she takes the other prince's arm. Again, still still on point, she's not put that second leg down. Fifth position again, and she does that again a maximum of four times. Again, just proving how strong and capable she is and and if I were wearing a hat I would certainly take it off to her. She is just such a remarkable ballerina to watch and I cannot wait to see more of her in the future. Also how can I not mention the villain? Kirsty McNally she was phenomenal as the bad guy. She was scary, she was evil, she was vicious, she was horrifying. She is somebody I would not want to meet in a dark street. I'm telling you now, and you know when you've got a bad guy, a really, really good bad guy, when they make you feel like that and when they're booing like mad at the end. She certainly did an excellent job. And of course it's not just our principles that make the ballet, there are so many other performers, you know, you know, from the corps de ballet, the other soloists, the character actors, which don't really dance that much, but they are just plain characters, such as the king, queen, the uh, master of ceremonies, even, even the evil fairy doesn't like do ballet, but she still has to act and, and move, and, and they all do an incredible job, and they are just as much as part of the story as our principal dancers are. And the soloists that play the, particularly the fairies as well, are just a joy to watch because each one of those fairies has to be unique and different to each other and they all have different styles of dancing which is really nice because you get such a good variety of dancers. And how can I forget the corps de ballet? which if you're not sure what that means, means the body of the ballet. They are the artists who are not at the bottom but they are the lower in the ranks. Usually these are very new ballerinas but they have to dance so in tune with each other. It's like watching synchronised swimming. They have to be on point with their movements and they have to match each other and be in sync and it's just mesmerising to watch. and. They are such talented girls and I'm sure most of them will go on to do great things as they further into their careers. But I also have to mention as well, it's not just the performers, it's the people behind the scenes who do the costumes, lighting, scenery, props, the production team, the hairdressers, makeup artists. Without them there is no show they all deserve to get as much credit as they possibly can 
it amazes me how many different talented people can come together and make this show a spectacular success that it is and how it's not just watched in the UK but people from all around the world was watching this and they even go specifically to, to London to see the Royal Ballet Company and that is actually one of my goals one day is to go and see them live. I was meant to go in May but unfortunately with Covid I wasn't able to and I was so disappointed but I know that one day it will be there for me to go again. It's it's on my bucket list. Before When I hit 35 I am going to go and see a performance by the Royal Ballet Company and I cannot wait. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this um, little review. Unfortunately, it has um, now finished streaming. But if you do get the opportunity to see it, or if you want to get the DVD, then I would recommend it. You will not be disappointed, I promise you. And next week I will be going, getting back on track, I will be doing another video. I will be talking a little bit more about my anxiety and the state of my mental health. As I said earlier in the video, unfortunately it was part of the reason why this video was delayed and I really, really want to go in depth with that. So I really hope you'll join me and, and hopefully we can share some experiences together. Oh, and before I go, if anybody can put a comment in the comment section, if you can recommend any editing software that's really good with Windows, mine is a load of rubbish. It is so slow, it, whenever I'm trying to edit a video, I want to throw my laptop out of the window because it is so annoying. It, and that's why I've been struggling to edit because the, the sound is fine, but it's not matching up to what's appearing on the screen. It's, the, the picture is in slow motion. It's so painful to edit. So if anybody can give me any suggestions, I will be really, really grateful for that. So, um, <laughs> thank you very much. Anyway, I shall see you next week for another video. So, I hope you have a very good week. Bye.